Hi friends and welcome to another weekly energy reading. This is for the week of May 29th through June 4th. It's a very interesting week this week. Um, I hope that you're hanging in there. Um, it is officially Gemini season, right? I forgot to mention that last week. I do apologize, but it is Gemini season. And Gemini is known for being a little extreme or like in the extremes and that's fine. We love Geminis. We love you. Um, so with that in mind, Something that stood out to me for this week's energies, um, or next week's, depending on when you're watching it, the the, the week of May 29th through June 4th, um, is that there can be a lot of extremes around uh, home life. Uh, Mars is square in Lilith, and and Venus is like sextile Lilith as well. Let's talk about Lilith for a, se for a second, because Lilith is called the Black Moon, and it will appear in your natal chart somewhere. But basically what's happening with Black Moon Lilith is that it is sort of like in the fourth house, so ruled by Cancer, or the, the house of our, like, our origins, where we're from. And Gemini bringing a lot of communication, right? Um, Mars is also conjunct Jupiter, so there's like a lot of adventure and like a lot of growth, a lot of ambition towards sort of like going after things. So to that end, um, endless fascination could be a theme for this week. Uh, fascination. Um, also sort of like disturbing thoughts, um, like realizing something about your past um, that maybe has been true all along, but you're now discovering like revelations of that sort of uh, flavor. Um, you know, I'll call it like bad blood or something. Could be another theme for this week. June 4th, which is uh, next Saturday, is a big day. Saturn goes retrograde. Saturn is joining Pluto, which has been in retrograde since, I don't know, end of April. Do you remember that? Saturn being the planet of restrictions is sort of, um, <laughs> I guess maybe just like taking a step back and being like, all right, you know, it's not a free pass, but it is the energy of like, there's like a little bit, if, if you're reeling in a fish, yeah, anybody do fishing? I don't really fish. I don't know why this is the analogy. But if you're uh, reeling in a fish and there's all that tension on the line, that could be seen as like the normal direct energies of Saturn, the planet of limitations and restrictions. There's always like this tension. There's always the struggle. There's always the mountain to climb. To, for me, Saturn ret retrograde is sort of like the releasing of this line, a sense of freedom. I'll call it a false sense of freedom because really what's happening is structure is falling away. So remember when we were talking about the Pluto retrograde? Was it Pluto? Yeah. The Pluto retrograde at the end of April, we were looking at what am I doing and why am I doing these things? It was very... Um, introspective and sort of tied to, um, you know, our desires, like what we're going after and realizing like, oh, like I've been chasing this thing this whole time. Why am I doing that? And maybe in a good way, like, why am I doing that? You know, maybe it's revealing other things for you. Saturn is the planetary energy that builds the structure of that thing you've been doing. So now is a really, really good time to like unlearn some things and maybe build something back better um, in a new way. So because this season is all about communications, ideas, uh, things moving very quickly, air is the element of the time. So just like that, you can um, take a deep breath and blow some things away. I would say just like let it um, let it all go. This is a highly int introspective time, so it's a good time to spend time alone, to learn to be alone, be alone with your ideas. Um, Saturn retrograde will point out the flaws in anything that's not working, and you know, you can be hard on, we can be hard on ourselves to that end. I'd say, don't do that. Um, just realize that this is the energy of the time, so you might be dealing with this, or somebody else might be dealing with this, like people that you know. Um, oh, and yeah, of course, we have the new moon in Gemini. 
So that's before the retrograde, but the new moon in Gemini is happening at the end of this month. Um, again, to that I say, this is all about meditating on a new way forward. A new way forward. Not ever about, but we've always done it this way, but this is how it's done. Well, I've seen you do this. I've seen so-and-so do it. That's definitely not the energy of this week. It is the opposite. It is about doing something differently. And if you're not ready to do it differently, it's because things are becoming undone. This is all about ideas. This is about thinking about something differently. Let's see if there's anything that I missed. Review progress, reorganize your schedule, reevaluate goals. Yep, yep, yep. Uh-oh. Yeah, okay, so use your, to use the, this energy, connect your thinking to your feeling and calmly express yourself. See the world shift for you. Um, have a personal look at internal structures, also outside structures, as in what do your family and friends have to say about you? What are their unwritten, unwritten rules for your behavior? And what about society? What are society's unwritten rules about our behavior? This is some big stuff, you know, it's not, <clears throat> and it's not easy because this is like really big stuff. This is really big structural stuff. Um, this is what we're building, what we're uh, aiming to create in our life. This is all, this is all around that intention of the desire. This is North Nord Taurus really like uh, becoming very real for everybody. And Oh man, what was the last thing I was going to say before we get into the reading? Right, that the, it's also about, right, the structures of like where we're going, but also observing the structures of where we come from. Why do we exist the way that we do today? What were the things in place and the powers in place that created us? We're just looking at it. We're just gonna look at it, okay? E me me. Let's get into our reading. I have a, another a new cloth that I'm using here. You'll notice that it's popped out for a bunch of the new videos that are coming out um, during this time. I got it in Jamaica. Surprise. This <laughs> ganja love. <laughs> Tapestry is from Jamaica. I'm sure no one is surprised about that. <clears throat> All right, we're gonna do our little reading just to see what um, what other messages want to come through that maybe haven't already, or maybe specific message for somebody here. Oh, there's a hole in it already. Um, there will be a separate video for the new moon in Gemini, so look out for that, or maybe it's already posted. Let's do it. Let's do it. Full moon Libra, win-win um, outcome is forecast. Full moon in Libra. So yeah, this is about balance, of course. Libra is always about wanting to balance something. And it's full moon. So it is about some sort of resolution here, um, wa wanting to come to some sort of resolve. Sometimes that resolve is, okay, I'm over here, you're over there, we're all, we're each getting what we need. And other times it can look like, look at us being there for each other, fulfilling each other's needs. Mutual relationship. Or separate and equal. That's the... Uh, that's the energy there. We have full moon in Aries, uh-oh. And then the new moon in Scorpio. Okay, well, the full moon in Aries says a fiery climax approaches and the new moon Scorpio says work through your fears. A win-win outcome is forecast. A fiery climax approaches, work through your fears. So it does seem like this week will be a period of intensity um, but 
have seen this full moon Libra card come out as first, it gives me a really positive feeling that whatever your intention is, whatever your clean, pure intention is, as you traverse these energies, um, you'll be able to sort of stick through it. You'll be able to um, hold true to um, what it is you want this fair outcome to be. I think the trick to that will be to navigate some sort of period of intensity or maybe an intense conversation or just something that is, I mean, for lack of another word for it, just like triggering because we see a new moon in Scorpio here. So this is about, again, wanting to try something different, like wrap your head around something in a different way that doesn't cause you to go down the same um, hole of nervousness or fear what is that that's what this week is about it wants you to look at that and ask what is it <laughs> what is this thing yo full moon in aries though oh man okay i've got a, a different deck out today for our rider weight. I'm just using the other one for some some other thing. So this is why we have 20 decks. When I tell people I have like almost 20 decks, they they like don't believe me, but then also they do. The four of wands is underneath. Okay, so this is about commitment. What have you made commitments to? Or what are you willing to make a commitment to? Eep, will you focus, please? Thank you. The Four of Wands is an esoteric card. We see 11 and 11. It is a union. It is the structure. It is about um, safeguarding the longevity of a thing. That's what I mean by by commitment. Then we have Death. Scorpio showing up again. The Seven of Cups. The Moon. The Queen of Wands. The Seven of Wands. The Six of Cups, the Nine of Pentacles, the Queen of Cups, and the Ace of Cups. Oh my goodness. This seems really sweet. There's like fear here. This is, I'm, 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 I'm starting a sort of at the end here because that sometimes that's what happens. That's also sometimes how I read books. It's also sometimes how I write stories. It's like from the ending. Like, you know how it has to end. How you get there, I don't know. Um, under this New Moon Scorpio card, this work through your fears, we have then, you know, this, con this confusion, the fear, the moon. It represents elements of our subconscious, very Scorpio. But then we have the Six of Cups and the Ace of Cups. This is very, like, nice, harmonious energy. This is about being in harmony with your fears, understanding that, you know, this desire to give yourself love or to seek out harmony and love outside of you um, isn't always, you know, it, it feels good, but it's not really like, it's not really this. It's not really the, um, it's not ensuring the longevity of your happiness to seek it from an outside source. So, so this is really saying, try and be in harmony with the moon, your subconscious, your fears. If that's the outcome of this whole reading, I don't know if I have to read the rest of it, but let's just do it for shits. Oh, I'm just going to make sure that we're good there. Okay. So yeah, the death card is the first card that showed up. And so what we're looking at in the recent past potentially is some sort of change happening. Um, this is a positive change. Um, d death is about the ending of something and also a new beginning. When I imagine the death card, I see specifically still the card that's like in my mind from the North American animal, Northern animal tarot deck. Um, and it's got like this dead, you know, like mouse or a rat or a possum or something, but it's showing this flower growing out of the, the, the deceased animal. You know, I spent a lot of time outdoors and in gardens, 
And so I equate that with uh, not just the circle of life, endings and beginnings, but the enrichment that happens when things decay and the, how the soil becomes rich and fertile. I'm saying that because that is what's showing up here right after death. We have the Queen of Wands, which is somebody, this is like best friend energy, I got your back. This is, this is the, the power and the desire, the will to create something, inspiration. And then we have the Nine of Pentacles, which is luxury. Luxury, achievement, really just sort of opulent. So something has changed here I feel like you've changed for the better and you're sort of seeing where your value is. Like, what is your nine of pentacles? What, where do you derive your value from? It has something to do with how you've changed. It's something about where your inspiration lies. So I'm seeing that this is definitely a commitment to oneself here. This isn't like an external thing that's showing up. And that could be true for you. It could, you know, this is just what's showing up as the story in the cards. You don't, does, I'm not dictating your life here. I'm just sort of saying, showing, saying what's showing up and you could take it or leave it. We have two sevens that show up then. The seven of cups, the seven of wands and the queen of cups. This is incredible because it's showing up here under the fiery climax as in any time there you have a challenge to something, uh, a reaction, right? A fear shows up, there's confusion. You're not sure what to do. Um, we might get defensive about how it is we feel. I feel like this is the time to actually sort of defend your, um, defend your authenticity, as in, um, don't avoid conflict for the sake of avoiding conflict. I feel like this is the moment, this is the week for you to step up and say, no, this is really how I truly feel. Um, that could be a, a good response to any sort of confusion that comes up this week. Um, and hopefully that does the job, that does the job of dissipating any sort of fear that could show up. Let's get just a few more cards as what is the advice? Three cards, advice. Okay, well, we have the Knight of Wands. Oh, sorry, no, that's the Six of Wands and the Knight of Wands, but they look like very similar. Who is this? Please, please focus. Who is that? Is this you and your army of people? I mean, this is about victory. This is about inspiration and victory, moving quickly, passionately. And then the Five of Cups. It's interesting. It shows that there's success here in something, and yet you still feel kind of sad. This is a sad card. It's not always sad. It's just sort of, you know, it's crying over spilt milk. Something, you know, the, the, the Five of Cups reminds us to always find the silver lining of something. I love that these, these cards literally have like gold and linings to everything. Um, but gratitude just makes things flow. And so if we can be grateful for what's still, what, for what's here, for what's working, maybe this intense period will not rock us so much. But anytime we open ourselves to feeling anything intensely, Goddamn Scorpio is here on the table. The good or the bad, that can rock you. Good, good excitement, bad excitement. Um, it opens a window for um, momentarily allowing our subconscious to be sort of like written. In moments of high excitement, high fear, any of that stuff, okay? So that's why it's good to maybe practice more, more, more Libra-esque um, approach here. The middle way, be um, don't 
don't allow yourself to be to be rocked off course here. I'm not saying don't enjoy something that's good. Do it for sure. Just know that you know what comes up must come down because there's this this five of cups card. Mm-hmm. For sure, victory though. I just don't know why you're going to be sad about it. I don't know the details of your life. But I hope that this reading helps. Uh, let me know what you think. Feel free to drop a comment. Um, yeah, what else? Subscribe, like, do the stuff. Do the stuff, and I'll keep making videos. Okay? Thanks so much for watching. Uh, check out the New Moon Gemini that's coming out. Um, I also am posting a Mer Mercury Retrograde pick a card reading so definitely check that one out as well that's a brand new sort of thing all right thanks guys i'll see you on the next one